Guess who's getting into the XR race? Google and Samsung. The Samsung Galaxy XR, which I'm currently wearing on my head, is available now for $1,800 in the US and Korea. And what it is, is well, it's a VR headset, but it also has pass-through, and it's kind of like a combination between the MetaQuest Pro, which is now discontinued, and the Apple Vision Pro. The big difference here is Gemini AI, which can see both the world around you and what's on the apps inside this headset. And that's a really fascinating look at where things are going next. Now, Samsung and Google have plans for a whole galaxy, so to speak, of products that are coming within the next couple of years. AI glasses, display glasses, wireless display glasses, and VR headsets like these. And the Galaxy XR is meant to be kind of that first step to show how AI could be working with what you see and what you hear to create this multimodal AI experience. This type of stuff has been on glasses like Meta's Ray-Bans where it can see the world around you. But the ability for you to also blend that with the apps that you're using and the world around you, that's really new. And it makes me wonder about when you might be able to start having glasses that recognize what's on your phone in addition to what's around you in the world. And that's basically what's happening here. There are a number of Android apps on this. In fact, it should run millions of Android apps according to Google, but there are some optimized ones too. Netflix is exclusively on this. YouTube has a bunch of immersive videos. Maps, Google Maps has been enhanced with all of these 3D features and the ability to walk through uh, immersive locations. And there are also others coming from other companies, including Adobe's experimental look at what video editing might look like on this for 3D content. You are not meant to use this headset with glasses. You're supposed to have used prescription lenses, which Samsung was able to set up for me for my demo, and that worked great. I mean, I do feel like you could squeeze glasses into this, but I'm not sure what it would do with eye tracking. Also inside, the displays look really good. They're 4K resolution per eye. Where does it go from here? Well, that's a good question because the Galaxy XR is a foot in the door for where a lot of other products like glasses and watches and rings and phones are going to head. Google and Samsung both admit that this type of a product is only one part of the picture. But right now, for $1,800, the entry price is a lot more affordable than what Apple had been charging for the Vision Pro previously. And it comes with some extras for a short period of time, like some access to Google Pro AI and um, YouTube Premium to sweeten the deal a bit more. I think there are gonna be some more features that roll out for this over time, and there are optional controllers that give you that VR game controller-like feel, and it's very lightweight. This thing feels a lot lighter than other headsets on my face. It's partially also how the band distributes weight. Um, and there's eye tracking and there's face tracking and Samsung and Apple are promising these more realistic photo real avatars, kind of like Apple's personas, but not yet. That's down the road. Could there be a way that this begins to work with other VR headsets and apps? Well, that's totally unclear, but Google and Samsung are promising an open ecosystem that also is aiming to go into business and enterprise. These are early days and we're gonna have a full review on these soon enough, but those are my first impressions from this basically final version of Samsung Galaxy XR here in New York.